Next question is from George YRX. Myths and facts on apple cider vinegar. I'll tell you the truth about that stuff. It's great for uh, baby back ribs. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's, that's, that's your secret that's ingredient. What, I used it last night. So I was I was making ribs last night, and I actually used that to hydrate the ribs. So that's you, all I use it for. Really. You know what it's? You know what it, is it? Is it got some health benefits? Yeah, but it's for nothing, the gut, right? That's it's nothing it special. Um, it's not like some miraculous. So for a second there, it was like super old, popular. It yeah. still kind of is. It's become. I don't know who started it. Was it a Tim Ferriss, Ben Greenfield type of biohack thing to have? Everybody wants two that table, one thing. That two tablespoons like to start their day off yeah. every day, right? Uh, to to set your your gut right and balance it out or some bullshit like that's been like the the trendy thing to do yeah it's got some i guess some antimicrobial properties and but you know what though if you have um for some people i know who have gut issues it's terrible like right. for me if i if i have apple cider vinegar on an empty stomach it's gonna i'm gonna kind of have a good time oh really it Absolutely. messes you up it does it does feel good on me so i i have i have taken it before like that where i because i'm trying to remember where i saw that first um but it's not like it's not noticeable. Yeah. It's not no, like, oh there, my God, that's all I had to do? Yeah, there <laughs> is there is Forget no- this whole fitness stuff. There is no miracle food. You know what? I'll use another example just to kind of illustrate this. For a second there, it, remember the acai berry? The, yeah. they, they grow, the go, it grows in the Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, or goji berries. Like, yeah. oh my God, they're so incredible. Yeah. They're chock full of antioxidants. It's like the what, one degree different than a blueberry. Yeah. You, it's, it's literally just exotic. The, it's literally yeah, like yeah, the same yeah. thing. Like Did you, you know break, that? You know the truth is, yeah, blueberry yeah. is better. No, a acai berry was became one of the. Okay, they made. Uh, it's because we didn't know what it was. Nobody in America really. There was like a few places it's in the world you could find these acai local. berries or whatever, and you had companies like Monavi and some of these yes. that they bottled it all up and t and promoted all about like Brazil or antioxidants or yeah. and tried to claim that it, it cured cancer and all these people and it's like literally you could go have a a, a half pound of blueberries. And get the exact same benefits. You want to know what's that. funny? Here, okay, this is true now. Again, there is no miracle food, but let's just say that all the common foods that we eat now we're not familiar with, and we just discover them. So scientists just discovered all the common foods that we eat, and they stumble upon the chicken, egg, and red meat. You know what those two foods would be labeled as? Oh, Superfoods. Yeah. Yeah. Super. Red meat literally could sustain you and provide you with every single essential nutrient. Now, I'm not saying it's ideal, by the way. Okay, so let me back up for a second. I'm not saying you should just eat meat. Yeah. I know there's people out there with a the carnivore diet, whatever. No, that's not ideal. But what I am saying is red meat will, you will not, you'll probably not have a nutrient deficiency yeah. and you'll survive for a long time or maybe forever. It's part of the essential macronutrient classification. Yeah, same thing with eggs, like a perfect protein and the yolk is chock full of all these incredible things. But because we're so familiar with these foods, yeah. I couldn't come out and say, you know, steak, the super, like everybody's like, well, I eat steak all the time. Yeah. Just like I couldn't come out with blueberry juice and sell it like they do so with what is acai it? juice. Do, Doug, are you, do aren't you an apple cider Even vinegar guy? Other. Uh, I did a long time ago, but not recently. It's, is that what it is? It just is it supposed to just promote good gut health? Isn't that like the big thing from it? I mean, yeah, and they'd say it's anti-inflammatory, and you know, you could it's supposed to like extend your life or something like some what crazy yeah, that I didn't know. No. I think people I th use it for dieting as well. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, drink. I mean, it's just you're probably just drinking stuff. more is what you're doing. You put. Is it considered in like a prebiotic or anything? Like What's is it? No, it's got some antimicrobial properties, uh, so it could kill you know certain bad bacteria, bacteria right? Yeah, and, and but it's supposed to populate good bacteria, kill bad bacteria. That's all it really is, right? Yeah, yeah, but it's not. Again, there's no. There's is it no that much food. different than eating like fermented food? Is it that much? I mean, uh, you know, re regular vinegar I think is kind of similar. So regular vinegar, balsamic vinegar, has got some health properties. If we're going to compare. The two. Right. But you know what it is, is what they'll do is they'll take, and they'll do this often with foods, is they'll they'll take one thing and then they'll they'll extrapolate and yeah, add yeah, yeah. like, oh, okay, so the antioxidant capability of this is this. And then they'll, you know, then they'll say, oh. That's what they did with the acai berries. Yes. They took out that like all these super antioxidants and they go, well, what are antioxidants good for? Antioxidants are good for X, Y, and Z. Therefore, this juice helps cure X, Y, and Z. It's exactly. Like, like you, whoa. Yeah. You want to know what this, you don't want to know what the shitty truth is? And this is backed by lots of studies. Here's the shitty truth. And I know it's a lot more complex than this, but if you're eating in a calorie deficit, a lot of what you eat doesn't really make that big of a difference. Now, I know that people are going to hammer me for this, and there's I, I, I totally admit it's a lot more complex than this, and what you eat determines how you feel, and there's essential nutrients and essential macronutrients. I get all that, so I'm not you know saying that that's not true. But like sugar is a good example. High sugar 
diet where your calories are below maintenance. You're at a, a weight loss diet that's high in sugar. Guess what that sugar does to your body? Nothing. It doesn't do to your body what a high sugar, high calorie diet does to your body, where yeah. you see all this inflammation and you know increased you know cancer risk and all that stuff. So this is true for a lot of things. That's like Lane's number one mission is to get that message across to people. Is that in in the context of low calorie, all this bullshit that people try and say about does stuff it make that big of raises difference? insulin and this is the cause of obesity epidemic and Coke will make you fat and sugar will make you fat. He's like, dude, in a, if show me a study that shows you in a calorie deficit all those adverse effects that you're talking about. From it those doesn't. Foods. And the, and the, and the, there are scientists that will do this on themselves. I ate a. Fast food diet, and I lost 30 pounds and improved all my blood you know, markers or whatever. Now, here's why it's more complex. It's going to make your appetite. You're going to be hungrier. You're probably going to feel like shit. You're going to crave more food. Mm -hmm. It's not sustainable. So there's a lot more to what I'm well, saying. Well, yeah, and you can't tell me that. Okay, let's say you have uh, your calorie maintenance is 2,000 calories, right? So calorie deficit would be 1,500. Okay, right. so if you're eating 1,500 calories. Someone who eats 1,500 calories of a balanced diet, proteins, carbs, fats from whole foods, versus someone who eats 1,500 calories from mint chip ice cream, Right? You can't tell me that the person that is eating the whole food diet is not going to have other health markers or other benefits that the person in the calorie deficit. Yeah, there's, of course. Where this, this you, you got to still have your essential nutrients and all that, of course. But I'm saying, let's say you have two lower, you know, two uh, diets that are below maintenance in calories. Okay, one of them is 150 grams of carbohydrates. The other one is 150 grams of sugar which is also carbohydrates, right? So both carbs are the same, one sugar, one isn't. If they stay that way, you're not going to see that much of a difference in terms of the person's health and stuff. Now, how they feel, I will argue, is different. You eat 150 grams of sugar, yeah. your appetite's probably going to be a little bit different, up and down, your energy might be a little different. And that's important. We should consider all that. But my, well, my point is- Cravings that too, right? That's what I mean. Yeah. My point, though, is that there's this whole superfood thing now, there's definitely foods that don't have tons of value, except for maybe the palatability. Right, right. Like, I can argue that- like watermelon you know, versus avocado. Yeah, or a Twinkie, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it doesn't have, it's got calories, but I mean, what other value? But these, this whole superfood argument, um, a lot of it is just, they'll take something that a lot of people don't use that seems exotic, mm -hmm. and then they'll spin it and market it and sell it to you. And because you've never used it before, because it sounds weird, you know, it's the goji berry, it's noni juice, it's whatever- <laughs> Now you're going to want to Now that all being said, I don't see there's any, there's any, no harm, no foul in you taking two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar in the morning. If it makes you feel good and you notice it makes your gut feel good, it's a very inexpensive product. Or you can just hydrate your ribs like I do with it. <laughs> so what do you do? Soak them yeah. in it and then? Well, yeah. Like when you do a long smoke like that, like every hour, couple hours, I'll go in there and I'll hydrate the meat so it doesn't mm -hmm. dry out completely. And apple cider vinegar is really good for that. Yeah. Just the apple and the, the flavor mix really well with it. That's all. Aside from gaining 20 pounds of muscle, I don't, I didn't notice anything on it. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> just kidding. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe.